perfect room with a little juice. Oops. Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like a duck bill platypus. <laughs> Check out the knots. It's the leaning tower of Chisa. <laughs> Let's go, Tibbot! Great adventures await! Welcome back, everybody, to Dystopian Dance Party's Year of the Weasel. My name is Zach. I'm Kelly. And uh, if, <laughs> for those of you who are just joining us for some reason in the middle of all of this, we are watching Pauly Shore movies, television shows, sometimes his podcast. Uh, you know, just we're just fully immersing ourselves in Pauly Shore for a year or until we literally cannot take it anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which we've already made it to Biodome. So I feel like if, <laughs> we, if, we made it past Biodome. We have yeah, watched Biodome. So yeah, I feel like if that didn't break us, we've already done better than most of America in tolerating Polly Shore. So I, <laughs> I feel pretty good about our chances of getting through the rest of it. Uh, so, but today we're not talking about Biodome. We're we're talking about honestly not much. Uh, we we like to do these mini sods <laughs> to kind of space things out. Uh, I don't have all that much to check in about. One thing I will say, I, I don't like talking about views and and hits and and likes and stuff because I, it makes it seem like I care. But um, our views on YouTube have really tanked. And I, I, think, <laughs> I think it's remarkable enough to comment on. Uh, personally, my theory, and, and this is going to make me sound even crazier. I think we were shadow banned for our uh, Goofy Movie <laughs> video. <laughs> I, think, I think the Walt Disney Corporation does not want us to tell the truth about Goofy and his weird penis that may or may not exist. And uh, I, all I'm saying is, after a Goofy movie came out, we were getting, uh, you know, not a not a ton of views, but sometimes we'd crack a hundred. We, you know, they were like like high double digits, and now it's like Jury Duty has like 15 views. I'm just saying, it seems to me that when we started telling the truth about Goofy, all of a sudden the viewership dried up. So, which is crazy because I did see um, Paulie Shore actually brought attention to the fact that it seems like there's a lot of content recently about a goofy movie that he's been noticing. I'm like, well, we did that too, but we haven't been specifically called out. Right. We haven't yeah. gotten credit for having a whole episode about a goofy movie. I One know. and two. But that's the curse of genius. We're misunderstood and <laughs> underrated in our own time. You know, it's like this podcast is like the Velvet Underground. Not many people listen to it. But everyone who does is going to start their own podcast about Polly Shore. And, that, <laughs> and that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit what we're talking about today, because, uh, you know, one of my my one topic that I have for the mini. So today is uh, we often joke that much like Wild Stallions, we, we know all of our listeners by name. And I and I have one I have one to add. Shout out to Lee Christian, who I know from the Prince verse. My friend D'Angela Duff does a weekly book club for the Prince Studio Sessions books called uh, "What What Did Prince Do This Week?" and uh, and every every Saturday at noon, she and Michael Dean from the Prince podcast, and um, sometimes another academic named C. Lee McInnes, uh, get together and read through one week of. Dwayne Tudal's Purple Rain Studio Sessions book, and when that's done, they're gonna they're gonna go into the the, the sign of the times one. So, um, how, so she's been how doing can that. We do this with Polly Shore. How can we do? <laughs> what did Polly do this week? <laughs> I know. 
that would make the mini so so much easier to like come up with ideas for. <laughs> so anyway, I you know there's like a small crew of people who who tune into that every, every week, or I honestly don't even tune in every week. I I usually catch up later. But Lee is usually there. He's from the UK, you know. So he and I kind of like we we started chatting during that, and then um, followed each other on Instagram, and he started listening to. Gear of the Weasel. So this is from three weeks ago. So this is pretty. This is pretty new. Pretty uh, fresh development here. So he said <laughs> three weeks ago on the on our very first episode, joining late to learn at least as much as revisit. Not sure how it will go. So I love the I love, <laughs> I love the very clear uh, trepidation in, in <laughs> engaging with this project, which um, which I think everyone, including us, shared at the out, at the outset. I think pretty much everybody. <laughs> Contemplating the idea of a year long deep dive into Pauly Shore is like, I don't know if I want to do this. So, not only that, but like it's persisted throughout the entire project because every time it's like we record these so that we pretty much just record one session for two episodes of Minisode and or like one or two Minisodes a night and then the longer episode about the film or whatever. Right. And so it's all in one session. So it's like we're kind of recording. A month apart each time and so right. we'll have like a couple weeks of, of respite from Polly Shore and yeah. then Zach will just get a text it'll be like well when do you want to watch Biodome <laughs> right right yeah yeah <laughs> it, it, it really Biodome is like now. we're kind of in a constant state of of trepidation <laughs> and that's and that's basically uh how we've existed since the beginning of um of year of the way I mean we both we both have like clinical anxiety so it's kind of how we exist just yeah. full stop. But this is like specifically Pauly Shore related anxiety. <laughs> uh, but uh, what's been great about um, kind of following along with uh, Lee's journey is that um, he's also getting the other side of it, which is uh, getting slowly weasel pilled. And that's something that definitely I've experienced. Uh, some of my other friends, our friends, Katie and Ryan, I know they listen to our, our like real life friends. And um, a couple months ago, Ryan shared a screenshot from Netflix of like a documentary about swimmers. It's called um, something shore in the title. <laughs> and also the guy on the cover of the video looks a little bit like Polly Shore. Oh, is it the other shore? The, Diana the other Knight shore. Story? Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, is this the woman who I think? Oh, it's a woman. Her, but <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's how thoroughly weasel pilled yeah, I am. Yeah, I think they, <laughs> I think this is the woman who um she like swam across the ocean or something. Okay. I remember this being on Oprah. <laughs> Okay. It, if well, it is what I think it is, but I refuse to do anything but scroll down Google and see. Like, right. If right. I can't read it in the first sentence, I don't need to know the answer. Well, the point <laughs> is, like, I will often be in a situation where I see a, a glimpse of someone, <laughs> and it like has the gestalt of Polly Shore. Apparently, okay. regardless. So that of gender, happened with me too. There's a billboard. This is really stupid. There's a billboard. You know how Neil Patrick Harris is doing those ads for uh, some casino. Uh, I don't know if you have yeah. those over there. They are really yeah. pushing casinos in Michigan, so I don't know if that's oh, the yeah. case everywhere. I mean, they're doing, like, a lot of sports bet. I think sports betting might have just gotten legal in Maryland, too, because every fucking commercial is about sports betting. Yeah. And then they'll be like, call this number if you have a gambling problem. And it's like, gee, I right. wonder why people might have gambling problems. <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, there's, um to go along with those ads, there's a billboard with Neil Patrick Harris. And, like <laughs> the first time I drove past it, because we were driving on Woodward into Detroit, I saw it and I just like, it doesn't even particularly look like Pauly Shore. So I don't know why my brain did this, but I was like, is that Pauly Shore? <laughs> <laughs> like, like current Polly Shore, where he has he's older and he has shorter hair because Neil Patrick Harris has. And part of it is that I can't see anything. I need new glasses, and my vision is very poor. So that's part of it. Then the art, other part of it is that my brain just, if given a puzzle to solve, <laughs> like if I in. can't see what it is, it just fills it in with Polly Shore. <laughs> yeah. So it's been fun to like hear from Lee over the last couple of weeks, and he and he's gone. He's gone hard. He watched in the army now. He God, watched Son in Law, Encino Man, or as they as they call it in the UK, California Man, and um, <laughs> and so one of the things that I wanted to do, I wanted to bring in some of the some of the insights that he shared with me, 
Like, here's a fun thing. He messaged me on Instagram and was like, did you notice that the costume designer for Encino Man was Marie France, who was also the co- one of the costume designers for Purple Rain? What? <laughs> and I did not That's know. That's amazing and also <laughs> makes sense. Because remember, we tracks, were talking right? about how Stoney's outfit was very, like, new romantic. Like, he yeah. was one of the extras in um, First Avenue? First Avenue, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. He could totally, he could totally be. So that completely passed me by. And then um, he also, he I think he's actually watched more season one Totally Polly than either of us. Well, he's doing it, I think, more systematically than either of, of us because because uh, he, he said some funny episodes in season one of Totally Polly shopping for the, an MTV Awards outfit. And he starts doing the jerk out and acting like Morris, Morris Day from the time. So, of course, we did our whole thing about the Paisley Park episode. Of course, anytime Polly Shore and Prince intersect, I guess I've made that one of my niches, right? Because that's that's one of the things I'm bringing which, to. Which happens frequently. It, it happens pretty a often. A lot. Paul, you seem to be a little bit of a Prince fan because because honestly, the context of this of this totally Pauly video it's the for season one, so it's the 1990 MTV Music Awards, I think. Um, yeah. So I guess that's the VMAs. Every episode, he's doing a different thing to get ready. So in the first one, he gets his nails done. Um, and that's why, Callie, when you, when I sent you the video, you said that he has the the long yeah. uh, pink <laughs> that, nail. That was how it opened. <laughs> I didn't have time to watch the entire thing until later. But I opened it up, and the first thing he does is just go like this. And then he just has <laughs> one press-on nail on his pinky. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in the first the first episode, he gets his nails done. The second episode, I skipped most of that one because I was trying specifically to get to the one with the Morris Day reference. But anyway, the third one, he goes and is buying a suit. This is back when Totally Polly played music videos. I think they must have, for once, not played Other Side by Aerosmith and played uh, Jerk Out by the time because he came out and just like, Singing jerk out, and then he does a little Morris Day impression. Go. Jerk out, do the jerk out with me, bud. Do like this, watch. What's the jerk out? Do the jerk out, Stony, buddy. Watch. <laughs> do it. Come on, do that. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Say jerk out. Then go down like that. Everybody wants to see you jerk. Dude, is this a cool? Do you like my outfit, buddy? I'm going to MTV Music Awards tonight. I was thinking maybe I'll get him a Morris Day Wish, but. <laughs> Did you feel the vibe? Buddy? It feels so yeah, niche, like? but I guess if Jerkout was on, you know, that was a pretty decent hit. So I guess if that was on the show, it makes sense that he would be riffing on it. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily, though, because he was also singing a Depeche Mode song. So I think he kind of <laughs> just true. was singing whatever he wanted to sing. <laughs> whatever popped into his head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to look up if it was ever on Totally Polly, but I can't find anyone who documented this. For some reason. Yeah, this is why we need what did Polly do this week? We we need yeah. to know the playlist of every episode of Totally Polly. Yeah, because he's singing Depeche Mode and then they play a Cure song. And he's like, well, this isn't this isn't Depeche Mode, but it's the Cure. The reason he's singing Depeche Mode is because he has like a long like black gown-ish. It's not like a gown, right. but it's like this long black outfit. And right. A big like hat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, this is very Depeche Mode. <laughs> it's like, is it though? <laughs> the funniest thing about that too is that he keeps like saying like, oh, well, this is too much like Morris Day. Morris Day is going to have a problem with me wearing this because we're dressed too similarly. <laughs> or like um, Michael Hudgens from <laughs> NXS. So, but, but then like they all look like something that Polly would wear. And then when he shows what he's actually wearing, it's just those outfits, like a vest and like a <laughs> scarf, but with shorts. <laughs> Another thing that that I never saw on my Instagram, I I have a boring life, so most of my Instagram is just pictures of records I bought. So actually, while I was in Detroit, uh, Callie and I went to Found Sound in in Ferndale, and I got a couple records, and one of them was Sister by Sonic Youth. And when I posted that, Lee was working his way through Totally Polly, and he was like, uh, "This was one of the few." bands that got trash in Smash or Trash on Totally Polly <laughs> season one. <laughs> Which is very funny. That's so funny. I, yeah, I don't think I've seen any that got trashed. Yeah. But they're they're it's always funny. like Aerosmith or Motley right, Crue and right. they always get some. <laughs> right. It's funny to think, like I never really thought about like 
what would the average Pauly Shore enjoyer think when confronted with a band like Sonic Youth? And I guess now we know. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got today. I don't know. This is going to be it's a real tight one. Thanks for, for listening, Lee. Hopefully it wasn't weird that I made a whole episode about you. If you want <laughs> to have an entire episode made about you, start listening. We need we need more listeners. Uh, and especially if you if you review the podcast on I, on Apple Podcasts or your other service of choice, uh, we, we may even do two episodes about, about you. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll keep doing it. Trust me, less than 15 people have listened to our jokes before and we've been just fine. We can, <laughs> you know, I, I could have zero views and I'll keep doing this shit all the way to the bitter end. But it is more fun when other people are involved. So, yeah, if you do get involved, you can find us on Instagram at Dystopian Graham. You can find us at you on YouTube at Dystopian Dance Party. You can find us on the web at dystopiandanceparty.com. You can email us at hey buddy at dystopiandanceparty.com. And, Has anyone uh, and emailed us yet? Not yet. No, no. <laughs> Come on. Like, I went to all that trouble <laughs> of setting up the email. I, I haven't even gotten any spam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You just so, start uh, using that for like a, a like a job, like looking up jobs. And professional, stuff like that. yeah. <laughs> professional correspondence. <laughs> it's not going to be spam yet, so. Right. That's it for 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 now. We'll we'll uh, we'll be back in two weeks for Biodome. So get, so tune in for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know that bass on Irresistible? Play some high stuff up on it. Wow. With the strength, too. Now lead the strings off. Yes, yes, Matt, yes. Yeah. Don't take no prisoners. D, going to D. 